Hi, how can you spot an electric car owner? Well, you don't have to, they'll tell you. <laughs> As you've seen in a recent video, yes, I'm now the owner of an electric car and they're awesome. And after driving it for a couple of weeks now, uh, there's basically three things I really notice. One is the complete lack of, essentially the complete lack of noise. The only noise you get is from the road tires, basically. Uh, the second is that it's very smooth. There's no vibration from the motor when you idle at the lights, when you stop at lights, it's just like complete dead silence. It's absolutely brilliant. But the third and most important, I think, um, and Mrs. E Vblog agrees, is that there is just no pollution at all. You can't smell them. We just get so used to existing internal combustion engine cars. You know, you're loading your kids, you know, the engine's running, you're loading your kids into the car. It takes forever and the car's filling up. You know, even though it's just sitting there, it's just filling up with the fumes and you're just ah, choking on it. So you don't really notice it until you drive your electric car and then you go hop in to your old internal combustion car and you just go, <laughs> this is terrible. Mrs. E V blog called now calls her car the stinky car because it yeah they just stink. So getting rid of like air pollution is one of the big things. Yeah, we can talk about global warming and all, you know, CO2 emissions and all that sort of stuff. But a really important thing that can make a tangible difference now to everyone, everyone's lives, including saving lives, uh, because a lot of people die from air pollution. Here's the thing, the Australian Institute of Health uh, reported in 2011, 3,000 premature deaths each year result of air pollution. About half that comes from transportation. I believe the figure is like even higher than that that basically most air pollution in cities comes from vehicles cars buses trucks and you're just breathing all this stuff in absolutely terrible for your health and this is where electric cars come in no emissions so your cars and your trucks and your buses, they all emit, uh, you know, petrol, diesel, gas, whatever it is, they all emit um, all sorts of horrible stuff. You're talking carbon dioxide, you're talking nitrogen oxide, particulate matter, benzenes, all sorts of crap just spewing into the air. Absolutely terrible for your health. So uh, to me, this is one of the most important benefits of electric car is just cleaning up the air that we breathe every single day. So anyway, everyone's talking about electric cars, right? They're the hot new thing, and rightly so, they're awesome. Uh, highly recommend you get one if you can afford it, because they're still quite expensive. Anyway, I had no idea that electric buses were actually a huge thing. There's almost like half a million electric buses in the world. Um, unfortunately, you don't hear about them because like 90, 95% of them are in China because China, of course, has a huge uh, pollution problem and they're trying to solve that with electric buses. But I had no idea Australia actually runs some electric buses as well. And for the last 12 months, we had an electric bus trial right here in Sydney um, uh, at a company called uh, Transit systems. I, I saw this on the news and I thought, oh wow, electric buses, that's cool. I'd love to check those out. So these four electric buses have been running on real routes around Sydney um, for the last 12 months and apparently it's been a big success. So I thought I'd contact Transit Systems, see if we can get a look at this. And they said, yeah, no worries, drop on by and we'll show you the electric bus. So when they've got four buses, um, 16 hours uh, like run time on these things so they can do a couple of shifts easily and uh, you know they've got gigantic batteries in them order of magnitude bigger than my Hyundai Ionic let me tell you we'll uh, see that in a minute so they've been running these routes here in, in Sydney and there's all the charging stuff in the back so I thought it'd be cool to check these out so let's go to the transit systems depot here in Leichhardt let's go oh and I did shoot this intro actually driving to transit systems in my electric car I thought that'd be cool but Unfortunately, my um, RX0 Mark II camera um, shot doesn't have autofocus, so it I must have accidentally focused on my arm when I pressed record, and it the whole thing's out of focus, so... Oh! So yeah, I got like 15 minutes of out of focus footage. Yeah, professional YouTuber. And here it is, a fully electric bus, one of four on trial here in Sydney. Well, there's actually a fifth one, which is a different brand, but... Where's the branding? Where's the electric bus branding? Guys, where's the electric bus branding? It's, it, yeah, oh, okay. It's, it's zero emissions, but there's no electric bus branding, but it's fully electric. Let's go check it out. And manufactured by Gemilang, and uh, you can hear probably a very noisy 
uh, diesel bus, but here we go. These are fully electric. One of the advantages is, is that they're completely silent. So, well, manufactured by BYD. They got the brand in on the uh, steering wheel there, and uh, we can have a closer look, but uh, it, apart from that, it's just a regular bus. You wouldn't know the difference. Fully air conditioned uh, bus. It's got a, in fact, uh, the, <laughs> the air conditioner on this, um, just the power that it takes from the battery uses a ton more energy than my fully electric car does. So there you go, we've got social distancing stickers. Sit here, sit here, sit here. Thank you very much. But uh, yeah, you wouldn't notice a difference apart from there's no emissions, so these things don't smell. There's no uh, you know, motor vibration, things like that. And they're completely silent, which is absolutely fantastic and just a generally a smoother ride. And here's the back. This is the business end, what we want to see. And I'm here with Andrew. He's the uh, leading hand. He's going to tell us all about it. Andrew, take us for a walkthrough. Yeah, cool. We'll start at the top. Uh, we have the high voltage distribution box. Main isolator. This is the most important thing if we're working on them. We've got to disconnect them, otherwise uh, we're going to be fried. So this is the main inverter here? Yeah, so this is your uh, DC to DC charger. So that puts power into the low voltage side. Uh, left and right we have the vehicle to grid or motor controllers. They put um, power from the batteries into the motors depending on vehicle demand and also power from the grid into the batteries. And these two black boxes on the side, that's just a simple cooling system for the motors. They're, they run an oil cooler with a, with a coolant um, returning to two radiator fans that's on the side here. Below that we have our air compressor Basically, that just runs on a uh, uh, on a motor, and the system runs like any other heavy vehicle, pneumatics. So instead of running from a uh, belt from a regular motor, yeah. it's running uh, from the battery. Pneumatic brakes, oh, suspension, right. doors, um, that sort of thing. And on the left hand side, we have our power steering system. So again, this is a little power steering pump uh, driven by a motor. That's electric. Obviously, um, on, a, on a conventional vehicle, it's driven, gear driven from the motor. And then obviously either side you have your uh, radiator fans to, to, for your, this is just cooling for the motor. The batteries have a separate cooling system up top, which, which is sort of a sealed unit. How do they cool the battery? It's, uh, it, do they pump uh, some sort of fluid through them? Yeah, is they, the they liquid just, uh, water cooled? Water -cooled. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right. And that, that's a separate system. That's, that's isolated from, from this, just the motor. And then all these modules up here are just the, various uh, modules to, to relay the information, you know, uh, throttle demand and uh, vehicle load and, and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, are there any data loggers in here for monitoring uh, the yes, systems? Yes, they, they're fitted with a, a, a data logger that takes the uh, information from the vehicle system and uh, relays that via a, uh, via a cell SIM card. Oh, right, okay, so they come back in uh, real time from the buses? Already. Yeah, so we can see state of charge, motor controller, uh, motor controller and motor temperatures, uh, vehicle speed, I mean even down to how many passengers. Oh, oh right, actually, okay. Are passengers? you counting passengers or are you going to No, it's wait? more, uh, sorry, how many, how many doors, when the doors are open, oh, okay. if the passenger bell's pressed. Yep. Um, really the sky's the limit. Anything on the CAN network they can, um, can get access to, but Right. So there's a lot of information there. We don't need it all. So how does this uh, chassis differ from a uh, a diesel one? Is this like the same physical back where the diesel motor would go? Or no, I think the, the chassis would be made specifically for the uh, to house all of this stuff. Right. Uh, so far as your your front axle, that's standard heavy vehicle. Uh, it's a ZF front axle. Your brakes are, I think they're Norbremshi. Um, suspension, you know, they're all sort of Wabco and, and you know, off-the-shelf type heavy vehicle industry type stuff. believe that power steering pumps is ZF as well. And then I guess the Gamalang make the body, so they do all the interior fit out um, with, with whatever spec uh, the customer wants. So from a maintenance uh, point of view, how does an electric bus differ after a year? You've, had, you've been maintaining these things for a year, what is the difference? Uh, we don't have to change engine anymore. Yep. Um, but I mean, so far as maintenance on brakes, um, you do still have to do you know, brake inspections. So it's checking your pad wear. Uh, we are seeing 
uh, significantly less pad wear and that's probably due to the regenerative braking so that's fantastic how much regen braking would you typically get we've seen up to 30 percent right. on a trip yep. um, that does differ obviously sydney you yeah. know yeah, going up and down hills you might get a bit more mm -hmm. um but yeah so far as like your hubs so your reduction drives in your hubs they need to have their oils changed every six to twelve months um, power steering oil you know that's that gets changed at an interval i think that's 12 months you know we've got various models here and uh, try and keep all the information on what gets changed at what interval can be a bit bit daunting. We don't have a motor in here. Where not, is it? Not in the back. They're, they're hub motors. They're on the on the wheels. They're actually on the wheels? Well, so you've got your, your hub and then you've got a reduction and then you've got your motor bolted right, straight it's there. It's right next to it. So yep. just the rear wheels? Just the rear wheels, yeah. Right. No, uh, no all-wheel drive here. Got it. <laughs> Why Why did they put them on the rear and not the front? It's just easier probably, to do the probably, steering? I would say definitely, uh, definitely space. Mm -hmm. um, the logistics of, of having a steer axle that's also a drive axle. Um, yep. A lot less moving parts and a lot less hassle. I see over here the charger behind you there. That is a Type 2 AC charger, is it not? Uh, yes, it is. So um, there are two ports and they go to the two vehicle to grid units mm -hmm. that then transfer that power to the batteries. We've got batteries up on the roof and we've got, I believe it is two battery packs uh, underneath. Okay, you needed that for the extra range? Uh, that... Yes. But I would have thought having the batteries on the top would be a weight issue, it would be a pendulum issue. Uh, not so much. Our gas buses have weight on the roof and they handle that right. very, uh, very well. But yeah, again, that was done in the design, the BYD designed uh, the vehicle the best distribution of weight uh, with their battery packs. All right, tell us about the uh, batteries in this thing. There's two batteries. Yes, we have the ones on the roof and ones underneath. They are a lithium iron phosphate battery at 368 kilowatt hours. That's 10 times more than my Hyundai Ionic uh, car. That's 10 times the battery capacity. How wow. Much, how much does the Ionic weigh? I don't know, a ton and a half maybe? Yeah, well, this is pushing close to 18 and a half ton. 18 and a half ton bus. 18 and a half ton. <laughs> wow. And how much do the batteries weigh? They weigh two and a half ton. Two and a half ton each or total? Uh, total. Total. So there's one down the bottom there somewhere? There's one down the, the bottom yep. and then the other ones, the main ones are up on the roof. Right. I, I thought that uh, weight on the top would have been an issue. Uh, no, they are. They they have airbag suspension, so they're able to take the weight and they have, uh, you know, standard like suspension so they've got you know, sway bar legs sort of prevent the body roll um, right. it's not really an issue okay so i assume they mount on the top just because the well the weight has to be distributed along the chassis yes but they probably didn't have room under the front of the bus or? no and, and you obviously want to keep uh, clearance oh, vehicle clearance vehicle clearance, clearance. Sure. so are they the same size top and bottom or is the top one larger? i'd say i think the top are more there are right. more up the top than there are down the bottom Right, and what else have we got on the roof here? Uh, you've got your AC system. Our AC system is a uh, TKE1200 unit. Okay, the maximum power consumption is 11 kilowatts of power from the bus batteries when running full cooling. That's with all the fans on high speed. It is 3.7 when the compressor is running at minimum capacity with fans at low speed. 3.7 to 11 just for the aircon to keep the passengers happy. You know, wow, yeah. In the in the uh, <laughs> summer, the heat, of heat. Austra heat of Australian Sydney <laughs> summer, uh, they get quite hot. Got it. And what is the uh, that low profile thing along the top there? Uh, that's that is your AC. Oh, that is the AC. Yeah, so that'll right. that'll have your condenser units and and all your other uh, gas for the air con. And you've got a different charger on this side here. Why is that charger different to the one on the other side? Uh, that's for a different model. A different model. You've got one other different model? Yes, we have a Utom. And that looks like a fast DC charger. That the handle looks like it's got the uh, Type 2 with the uh, DC fast charging contacts. Am I right? I am right. There you go. DC fast charger. So that bus would be DC charging, whereas the four that we're looking at, they're uh, AC going in, yep. but yep, they correct. convert them to DC. Uh, very correct. All right. Yep. Uh, tires, Andrew, are these like special low energy ones like you have on regular EVs or are they just standard? No, they're a standard heavy vehicle tire. Standard heavy vehicle tire. Standard heavy vehicle tire. Heavy vehicle tire. Yep. And we're going to drive into the pit. Hopefully not into the pit. Oh, well, not into it. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? 
no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened, sure. No, first time for everything could happen to me today. <laughs> Alright, we're going down under the pit here. And this is something you won't see every day. Under an electric bus. So, the, um, what do we got here? Our, up here is our batteries. Right. Uh, all nice and covered up. We have our rear axle. And we have our big hub motors. And obviously, uh, you've got your, your rear braking booster. Nothing too different about that. Over here, we have our cooling system. So we have uh, an oil to uh, fluid coolant uh, system to keep the motors cool. So that gauge on the dash is just indicating the temperature of your motors. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a hub reduction. Uh, there, there's a hub reduction yep. uh, gear system in there, but apart from that, Everything else. everything else is pretty conventional. From here forward, it's just a normal bus. Just a normal bus. Just a right. normal bus. Oh yeah, that one's got a nice new hose. Somebody's replaced that, was that you? Uh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> that was you, okay. <laughs> it gets all pretty grimy under here, doesn't it? Yeah, so, uh, the roads are not, uh, not, not kind. Right. Especially when you hit something and you get showered in it. And these are your suspension? Yeah, these are the uh, uh, torsion rods. Yep. Airbags, nice um, soft ride, mm -hmm. uh, sway bar, big, big sway bars. Oh yeah. Sway bar links. So a lot of this, all this stuff is, is standard yeah. heavy, heavy vehicle yep. industry. So uh, like you'd get on any, uh, any normal, normal bus. Right, except they got tiny little hub, but like they're remarkably small, aren't they? The motors, I mean, yeah, they are. They're just, Probably equivalent to, you know, a little bit bigger than what's on my Hyundai Ionic, uh, which is a 100 kilowatt motor, and that's about it. Yeah, 150 kilowatts. 150 kilowatts on the plate there. Yep. All right. And 550 newton meters of torque. Uh, 150 kilowatts. Okay, there you go. Wow. That's the hub motor. Thank you very much, Andrew, for the underneath tour. Robbie is going to tell us about the other electric uh, bus you've got, the Utong. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we, uh, we had a Utong uh, here on, on trial uh, for a couple of months. Uh, I needed to, have to buy another bus as a replacement, and I got approval to replace a diesel bus with a Utong. Uh, it's been in service now approximately nearly a year, I suppose. Or actually, Same length as the current buses? buses yeah, yep. maybe a bit shorter. It's like Holden versus Ford with the drivers. Right. Uh, some drivers prefer the BYD over the Utong. Battery capacity, battery distance, um, time, state of charge is very much similar uh, to the uh, BYD. Do we have range issues on either of these buses for daily commutes at all? No, not at all. When we first started the trial, I limited them to about uh, six to eight hours a day on short shifts. I said that would run for around four to six weeks. After two weeks, I had confidence in the vehicles and we extended them out uh, to probably 10, 12 hour shifts. Uh, we ran that for a couple of weeks and now we extended that out to any, any, any in-service run uh, they, they, they can operate on. Right. Uh, as I said before, we just treat them like a normal bus now. They do the same work, um, the same services as all our diesels. And uh, what state of charge do they come back to with after a typical day? So a typical day here is a little bit different when our in our inner city area. Uh, an average eight hour shift or an eight hour day is only around that 100, 120 kilometres. Right. Obviously we've extended that out so they go out maybe three, four times a day. They're averaging around 200, 250 kilometres and that's around between 12 and 14 hour day. Um, you've got to remember our congestion uh, we sit and don't move, uh, so we spend a lot of time in traffic. So, hence the low kilometres, but the big shift or spread of hours for the shifts. Um, they generally come back with around between 30 and 40 percent charge left. Uh, they're regening. They're regening around 30 to 40 percent uh, regen, uh, which was a lot higher than I actually expected. Yeah, it's hot. With our with our routes being in a city, bus stops are very close. Um, so I did um, have concerns in the early days that I thought we wouldn't get enough speed up to get regen from stop to stop to stop. Right. That's been totally opposite to what I, what I expected. Uh, the regen has gone far above my expectations. Have we haven't had any failures on the 
electrical side of the thing, like the motors, the uh, the chargers, the controllers, anything like that? No, we haven't had any failures. Um, we've had some driver error failures, um, okay. which was water getting on the dash with the window left left open. But from a hole in hole, no, we've had no failures. Wow. Um, we're currently running at 0.01 cent per k at the moment. It's the operating cost, which is uh, compared to a gas bus, yeah. it's, it's phenomenal. But it is early days. Any, anything that we've had to do, if there is a problem, was covered by warranty. Um, and Andrew would have talked about the general servicing that we had to do, uh, and that's the only money that uh, we've had to spend on these vehicles at this stage. Where does your power come from? Have you got solar on the roof? No, we don't have solar on the, on the roof. Uh, we are exploring that option, uh, but uh, right. that, you know, stay tuned. But even without that, the operating costs are just incredibly low very, compared yeah, to... Very, how much would a bus typically cost for petrol to... So our highest expense vehicle is around, uh, around 45 cents per kilometre. That's for our older gas buses. Mm -hmm. um, our, our electricity, what we buy our electricity at, because we're such a, a big organisation, uh, is quite reasonable, which helps as well. A lot cheaper than a litre of diesel. And uh, what's, what's the top speed of this bad boy? Do you know? Uh, <laughs> you haven't, you de haven't taken it up there? Depend, depend on what, what, uh, what speed zone I'm in. Right, okay. But it, get, but it gets there very fast. Right. Does it have like a cruise control and all uh, that? It does not have cruise control. Right. Uh, does it have any other um, uh, safety features that you find on regular electric cars like lane guidance, assistance and collision warning and uh, all, that, it, all that fancy? From standard it does not have any of that fitted. Right. Um, it does have hill assist. Okay. Uh, which is which is quite good mm -hmm. on some of, on some of the hilly streets of Sydney. Yep. My electric car's got like an auto hold uh, brake system, so I can take my foot off the pedal when yes. I'm stopped. Does this have anything like yes, that? Yes, that's good. It's got an auto hold. Oh, okay. Yes. Right, and it'll hold on hills as well. Yes. Oh, great. Because that's that's very handy. Because then the uh, that uh, relieves tiredness of the driver, the their foot always on the brake and yeah, yep. stuff like that. But Terrific. if we want to compare the um, like the motor output to say like a Tesla Model S. Yep. I let's do the, it. Tesla model S has a front and rear combined output of 615 kilowatts. So there are more powerful electric cars than this bus, but this thing can't, but they can't haul. How, how many cars can, can yeah. haul 27 standing people and 35 seating? <laughs> 35 seated. I don't think and, a Tesla can do that. But um, no failures in any of the charge controllers, any of these boxes. None of those, none of none the uh, magic boxes. boxes. Yep. We haven't had to put any of the electric smoke back in. <laughs> Um, these are fitted with a fire suppression system as well, oh, and well. up and up on the roof. Okay, what is that under here? The fire suppression uh, yes, system. Yes, we've got a um, detection line. Oh, okay, right. And with nozzles here. Yep. And over there, we're running That's a dry chemical. Okay. Obviously, not going to be water. <laughs> right, and that will automatically just pump this entire section full of foam, will it? Full or of, dry, dry, dry chemical. Dry yep. chemical. Yep. And that'll be once the detection line is. Uh, it's sensing that there's a fire. Right. Does the battery pack have any over like fire protection systems? Uh, they have a, a, a thermal overload sensor, right. which indicates to the driver that they're in thermal overload. But uh, so far as fire, mm -hmm. uh, the same system that's fitted down here is also up top uh, to protect the batteries from fire. Does the driver have any uh, monitoring stuff or is it all done here via remote? Do they have like a temperature gauges or something? Uh, they, have, they have temperature gauges to, uh, for their left and right motors. Uh, they have their power output and regenerative input on uh, similar to probably a, uh, a Prius or a, a hybrid Camry. That's, that's on the dashboard. Got it. And they're trained to monitor those and there's, it'll warn them if they... Yeah, so routes. that's part, all part of a driver's training is to uh, basic maintenance recognition so they know if warning lights come on uh, to call up maintenance and we, we guide them through step by step on what to check and hopefully remedy the situation over the radio. But you haven't had a single issue so far? No, fingers crossed. Not, not a single one, it's bound to happen eventually. But, yeah. Yep, <laughs> awesome. So is this a dedicated spot just for charging these? Or? Uh, yes it is, yes. I mean, it does, it does get used during the day for other, other uh, workshop-related activities, but um, the electric buses have priority place for charging. So what's the uh, efficiency figure in kilowatt hours per 100 k's? My, my electric car gets about 11. 
So this is about uh, uh, 110. Give or, give or take, depending on driving conditions. Right, so order of magnitude more, but we are hauling... A lot more. What, what is this weigh again? I think we said fully loaded, it's, it can be rated to 18 tonnes. 13.8 unloaded. So that's, that actually is about the same efficiency uh, based on weight, because mine, I don't know, what, one and a half tonnes? This would be oh, 1.3 tonnes or something. This yep. is 10 times more, but, and it uses 10 times more energy. So efficiency is probably about the same. Yeah. Nice. And uh, what's the expected, expected battery life? Have you uh, seen any drop in capacity? Do we know? We haven't seen a drop in capacity. They, they're rated to 22,000 cycles of the battery. It will obviously decrease gradually over time. They're warranted for eight years. Okay. That will decrease to no less than 60%. Okay, right, 60% after eight years. Yeah. And, that, and that doesn't mean that they're not going to be used. They'll just no. be repurposed. Uh, I think the... The gentleman over at BYD says they, they will repurpose them for things like uh, people's solar home setups and... There's lots of people who will buy used bat car, EV car battery packs yeah, to use not, them they're, not, they're no longer good for the application that they have, but they've yep. still got plenty of life in them. Okay, but no drop in capacity after a year, really? No, no... no uh, I'd have to double check the specs, but I don't think there's been anything, uh, anything so far. So you are actually running some sort of collision avoidance or trialling a collision avoidance system at the moment? So on our five electric buses, we are currently trialling a collision avoidance system, uh, which looks out for pedestrians, um, lane change, tailgating, um, swerving, um, which is, it gives a, an alarm signal up for the drivers. Uh, it doesn't work in conjunction with the chassis, so uh, it's not a braking system, it's, a warning, right, it's an early warning, warning system. Yep. Is there any uh, thought about going for any autonomous type, trialling autonomous? Uh, probably not at this stage, I don't right. think. There is a trial in Newcastle that obviously I've been watching uh, with a small bus. Um, but uh, we don't have any plans right at this stage. I think there's a mini bus in Homebush, isn't there? There's a tiny little bus running around Homebush. That's an autonomous Yes, there is. Bus. There's another yep. one that's the same as similar to, I think, the one that's uh, actually operating on the Newcastle foreshore. Because in Sydney, Sydney's obviously one of the worst places to drive in the world. It's so complicated if routes have to change at the last minute, autonomous buses probably aren't the best. Uh, and I think diversions will be our yeah. biggest our biggest problem uh, due to an accident, gridlock, a special event, yeah. uh, road work, uh, etc. There's always diversions uh, through the operations team for the drivers somewhere within our routes. And everyone's uh, been talking about wanting me to do a video on wireless road charging and it's kind of like the solar roadways thing. It works but it's not going to be practical. When the buses come back here, they've got the range they've got, they come back at the end of the day, they come to a known location, you plug them in, you can get a super efficient uh, direct charge straight into the battery. There's just absolutely no point to have like a bus lanes, charging coil, wireless charging coils under bus lanes in roads. It doesn't really solve any practical problem. It's just pointless. It's solar roadways all over again. Okay, tell us about the instrument uh, display here. So we have uh, left and right um, motor, con motor temperature. Mm -hmm. We have uh, state of charge, obviously uh, gear selector, um, power draw. So currently we're sitting at four kilowatts of draw. Because we've got the aircon on, even though we're idle. So, yes. yep. And obviously that'll include the, uh, the draw for the power steering pump, air compressor, yep. and all those types of things. Because um, they run on the, the, the high voltage side. Mm -hmm. And we have our low voltage, uh, low voltage battery. So it's got a regular bus battery. So that operates all the uh, all the normal things: mm -hmm. interior lights, indicators, dash lights, horn, um, all of the things that uh, uh, a, a conventional bus has. Yeah. And uh, it's got an RPM indicator. Does that actually? Yes, that's the the, the motor RPM. Okay, so it does actually, is that just familiarity for the drivers? Because you don't really need to know that, do you? Uh, not particularly, there's no, uh, no need to. Yeah, that's uh, I guess a choice by BYD. And the, those top gauges up there, red and green top gauges? Uh, that's, so air your pressure? operational air pressure, so mm -hmm. uh, your primary tank and your secondary tank. Um, obviously, if I... Oh yeah, yeah, you're pumping, yep. So I'm using the air pressure. Right. And you know, oh, pumping that up. And, yep. and that all cut back in. But apart from that, fairly conventional uh, for a bus. Yeah, um, pretty pretty standard. Nothing really uh, other than the the 
the electric motor that, that differs from uh, mm -hmm. from any other bus. Size wise, it's the same. But uh, there's no uh, gear in, in this. It's just drive, and that's it. Yep. Just put it in D, and off you go. Yep. You won't hear a gear change. And there's a fire suppression system here. They've never had to use it, but there's uh, fire suppression systems for the uh, battery uh, packs and also the uh, controllers in the back. But apart from that, there's uh, just the buttons for drive, neutral, reverse, and uh, it's looks got a radio and not much else. Looks like a pretty much a conventional bus. Yeah. And we've got various uh, cameras up here. We've got one in each door, one for the bus, and one uh, looks like a rear and front as well and we've got radio systems and air cons and uh, the air con controller yep. yep and pretty much a conventional bus I like it all right Back door, Andrew. Reverse. <laughs> Andrew's gonna take us for a ride let's go oh that's smooth wow very little vibration well, there's none really, is there? It's just rocking. So how does this uh, compare, Andrew, driving around the depot? Uh, definitely quieter. <laughs> right. Do people not hear it coming or? Uh, well, yeah, they don't hear it coming, but at the speeds where uh Driving in the depot, you can obviously hear the, the tyre noise. Uh, tyre noise. Yeah. The tyre noise would be the main noise, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. So how often do these come back to the uh, depot every day? Uh, yeah, so they go out in the morning and they come back uh, around 9.30, 10 o'clock. They get put on charge. Uh, and then they go back out again in the afternoon peak. The uh, beeping makes more noise than the, yeah. <laughs> than the bus does. So every vehicle comes in once a month, gets a, a level of check, um, and then uh, every three months they get a higher level, and then the six and twelves are, uh, are more in depth. Yeah, I think the six months, some some parts of the oil change. Is there a charging indicator on the inst on the uh, dash here to tell you how long it's got, like a regular EV? Uh, not a time to empty. That may be uh, changeable from the manufacturer but as we get them delivered, it's the state of charging percentage. So this is a Type 2 uh, three-phase charger, 480 volts, 63 amps, and they've got two of them. Uh, I assume that each one goes to uh, the separate uh, pack, and it's just a regular, um, you know, uh, like high-power three-phase Type 2 charger, and you simply just, they've got these dedicated sta stations here, just plug it in after it comes back from its shift and it's ready, it's good to go for another, you know, day or even two, um, depending on the uh, usage uh, requirements of this thing. And here's the uh, Yutong bus they've got. They've got one of these on uh, trial as well, uh, in addition to the four that they've got, but this one is a uh, CCS uh, DC fast charger. It uses the different charging system over here and Choose connector to charge. Connector unplug. It's currently charging. I don't think we can get any more information than that. Sorry, but uh, yep, that'd be doing uh, DC fast charging as opposed to the uh, Type 2 uh, charger. The uh, well, two Type 2 um, AC chargers that we've got for the uh, four ones we've been looking at. So on the Gemalang BYD, the charging's in the side. It has two chargers for the battery packs on the roof and the battery packs underneath. So they charge individually, but then they combine? They to... combine their power source right. to run the motors and everything else. Yep. So these are the charges. Oh, dual wielding, dual wielding. Got to go. The double barrel, it's yep. plugged in. So it should come up with state of charge, state and, of charge and also how long before it's fully charged. 424 volts AC, 55 amps. I oh, know, 108, it's just got in the other one and uh, estimated it's 55 minutes to charge. So once the charging process starts, yep. it will turn on the fans to keep the, the battery packs cool as well. Right. So it automatically uh, does the cooling as it's charging. Got it. Now a fan, you said fans, is that a liquid, is that an air cooled? So the, the fans are um, on the cooling pack, which then cools the liquid. So it's got a, a proper cooling system. 
liquid cool cooling system. Is, is that built into the pack or is that like external to the pack? It's built into the pack. So the cooling system's built in, it has a separate cooling pack, which is the bundle on the rear of the bus. So you're saying these have outperformed every, every other bus of this type in the yeah, world? Or? So, so from the data that we've received, these buses have outperformed um, in terms of their power consumption, uh, every other bus around the world. Um, yet to figure out why, but we've come down to the theory that it's the, the, the routes that they're running on, although they're normal Sydney routes, so it'll run on any Sydney route. Um, they're also um, lighter than all the other buses that have been built around the world. Why is that? Uh, basically, these were uh, designed and developed by Australian engineers for Australian conditions. Even though the, the chassis is Chinese, the body, Gamalang Australia, is it an Australian company? Yes, it's built in Malaysia at the moment, soon to be built in Australia, um, but all engineered by Australians for the Australian conditions and for what we actually need rather than getting a bus that is built for another market. And so regen, we get 30% regen. Um, we seem to be uh, getting a lot more regen than, than most others. We get 30% because there's two hub drive motors. So usually you usually get 15% from one motor. Um, so a direct drive motor, you'll get 15%. It's almost tempting to put extra little regen motors on the front wheels too, isn't it? It, is, it is very tempting, but it creates more drag as well. So there's, you've got to weigh things up. So even the battery packs, are, uh, we were looking at the battery packs on these, going, well, maybe we could reduce it a little bit because of the range that we're getting, you don't use all the range. Is, there, is the regen system adjustable so that the driver can adjust the regen? Or? The, the driver cannot adjust the regen. Um, it is set, but it's usually set for the, um, the routes it's going to operate on. In theory, could you operate this as a single pedal without using the brake? Can you, will, yes. it, will, it, will it come to a full stop? Yes, it will. Right, in what sort of distance will it? Depending on speed, but if you're doing 20 kilometres an hour, you'll stop within a couple of metres. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's that, pretty that's aggressive. That's a decent amount of region. Yeah, it's very yeah. aggressive. So in bus world, um, we've got retarders on diesel buses. It does the same thing. Oh, yeah, so, so bus drivers are used to that sort kind of driving. I was going to ask. Where they're not they... using the brake pedal so much. Right, yeah. okay, so it's not that different to drive for them. No, not really, no right. really. It gets off the mark a lot quicker than any diesel bus. Yep. Um, but yeah, in terms of, of stopping, it's basically the same. And we're in the live uh, control room here where they uh, get real-time reports and monitoring from the buses and uh, control the network. But we're now going to have a look at the Vera City system and how that monitors the real-time data from the buses. Rob, tell us about electric, uh, the gas, because you've got a fleet of diesel, gas and now electric buses. What are the pros and cons? What's the history behind those? Um, well, gas, gas has been um, at the state uh, transit depots for the last about 25 years. Uh, we're starting to dispose of our early gas buses now. Uh, the Scanners were the first, uh, with their tanks in their underbelly. Uh, the Mercedes come later in life in 04, 04 05, um, with the gas tanks on the roof. So they look similar to an electric bus, but one's batteries, one's gas. They're coming to the end of their life. They're, they're very expensive to maintain. Um, gas has become very expensive. So when these buses were purchased, uh, gas was, was quite cheap and it was a good option. I understand there was a lot of rebates for gas in the early days. Ah, oh, was that the incentive that got them incentive. going? And, and, and uh, clean, clean energy at its time. Now our latest Euro 6 diesel bus is more clean and efficient than a gas bus. The other thing is the economy out of a gas bus. Um, they require a lot of gas, uh, so they get around the up to 80 litres per 100, mm -hmm. um, where our latest Euro 6 diesels are averaging in our inner city operation uh, 40 or under, um, which is very good fuel economy for our area of operation. And you're now buying diesel cheaper than gas? Uh, yeah, we are. We, we're actually on a group, de a group deal for diesel, so we're a big buying power. That's uh, all of Australia. Um, yes, and it's around, approximately around 10 to 15 cents at the moment on today's price, cheaper than gas. But remember, with the gas also, it includes the cost of our infrastructure, which is in the gas per litre price. But uh, gas buses, you aren't going to replace them. They're just going to let them bow out. 
No, uh, as, the, as they come up for Price. replacement, um, we take anything that we can reuse, blinker lenses, and they're basically sent to the tip. There's no right. resale value for them, no one can do anything. Mm -hmm. If someone buys one, they can't refill it, um, so they actually, the gas tanks are removed uh, and certified and then uh, sent to the tip. Got it. So the future is fully electric or combination of diesel and fully electric? Where's your money? What time frame are we talking? Uh, I think Come it, on, crystal no, ball. It, it, is a, it is a crystal ball. <laughs> We're only early into this electric bus trial um, and has produced some good numbers and some good figures. Um, there is still obviously a place for diesel. Due to the infrastructure, the infrastructure is the big problem going to electric, the setup of the infrastructure within depots. Uh, especially when you don't have a greenfield site, when you've got existing site, cabling, it comes quite expensive. There's a big future for electric bus, yep. um, but it's still crystal ball at this stage. Got it. But there's not going to be no future? I don't believe there's no future unless something better comes along. If you said five years ago that <clears throat> you would have an electric bus, I've been in the bus industry all my life, um, I would have said you're crazy. Yep. Uh, I, I would have said... That, I would have said, go oh, away, it'll never happen in my lifetime. Um, but, uh, and now it's just wham. Wham, it's yeah. Along. Um, yeah, exactly. All right, you're going to show us the system, that uh, the real-time data logging okay. system okay. that comes back. What's we it called? Uh, okay. Vera City. <clears throat> so when we purchased the uh, four electric buses, we needed some form of telematics or data logger uh, to be fitted to those vehicles. Um, the most important piece of information that, uh, that we gain every day is uh, state of charge. As you see in the right hand col column under the bar graphs. So, those vehicles, if you look at the bottom vehicle, has 90% state of charge. We use this uh, system for reporting for energy consumed. The system has a lot of other features uh, emission savings, uh, GPS, as you can see, uh, and we can pull lots of valuable data to see exactly how they, our, our electric buses are operating within a day, week, month, and or year. Got it, I can see the ones charging down in the depot here. Yep, yep. And uh, there's one out, is there? Yep. There he is. I'm following him around. Oh, no, it won't report faults. We'll right. give uh, warnings if we have high battery temperature, high uh, motor temperature. Uh, we can go in and look. So if the driver calls up and said, I've got a light or I've got a, a high hot alarm, we can actually go in and have a look what the operating temperature is. Got it. So last year during Sydney's um, very hot weather, during the fires, uh, we watched very closely over the electric motors and the battery temperatures throughout those, uh, you know, 35 degree day, one after another, where, where the road had heat sink to see if there was any variation uh, in the operating condition. Mm -hmm. uh, we found nothing. We didn't nothing. see really any change. Uh, if there was a change, it was really not noticeable. The bus still went out and did their 14, 15 hour days. I came back with a very similar type uh, charge arrangement. So the cooling system's doing its job, it's got more than enough capacity to handle the hotter state? Yeah, more than enough, um, being more like a household system than a generic bus system. It means less moving parts, less, uh, less belts and all those kind of things. But um, we, we find that we find the cooling system and a reverse cycle heating system to be very efficient. We haven't had any complaints in the cold or the, or the heat. Definitely a way of the future compared to running belts in the back of an engine bay. Right, because belts snap and your air con, so your bus is still going, but everyone's complaining because the air con's failed, right? Yep. Yep. And you haven't seen that? Have you had any failures like that on these new ones? Oh, there, any? on the electric yeah. bus, there, oh, is, but, there is no belt. So, no, <laughs> no, no, there's no belt, but have you, you haven't had the motor fail for the air con system? No, we've had, Nothing we, like we've that. had no failures of anything uh, right. really that I can remember in regards to major operating systems in the electric bus. Fantastic. It's bound to happen eventually, but after a year of solid everyday use. So those four buses have now uh, have now done 174,000. Um, so we were uh, we had to do 100 100,000 uh, oh, 50,000 kilometres per bus uh, as contract with the Transport for New South Wales. Right. Um, we're well over that at the moment, so we're about 40,000 k's of where uh, ahead of where we needed to be. Do it, and you're still happy to run them because they're cheap to run and they're. And again, they're just treated like a normal bus here, in, out, uh, and used as much as possible we can during the day. Great. Thanks, Rob. Thank you.